In this episode, I'm going to troubleshoot a plasma ball. Now, a plasma ball was one of those displays that you see like in the science world and stuff where you can put your finger on it and draw electric arcs towards your hand. I've got one. I've had it for many years. It went up in a puff of smoke, and I'm going to find out why. This is called an Eye of the Storm. And what it is, is it's a plasma ball. Now, what a plasma ball is, is it's just a sphere that's filled with neon gas, maybe a little bit of argon and other types of rare gases, and a high voltage is presented to that ball in the middle, which it's, it's all under under low pressure, so it's under, uh, under a partial vacuum, under low pressure, and the high voltage will spew out like lightning bolts, and if you touch it, it'll be attracted to your hand. I got this thing, I forget when I got this, 1987. This came from uh, Rabbit Systems. And um, it uh, it died. In fact, I wasn't uh, there when it died. But my son had it running and uh, he got all he got all excited and upset. He thought that the house was going to burn down because the uh, unit uh, started smoking. So it hasn't been plugged in since. It's dead. And uh, I think what we'll do is take it apart and see if I can see what happened. Now inside this thing, uh, it's going to have a flyback transformer is what it's going to have in it. It's going to have a, an oscillator. You can vary the frequency of the oscillator because that's what the controls were. It would also operate off of uh, off of an audio signal as well as a microphone, so it would respond to music. And uh, it's, it's just basically a high voltage generator. It's just a, a black and white type TV flyback transformer that's inside here. I just don't know what screws have to come out on this thing to open it up. So bear with me while I inspect and see what what screws have to come out. I think there's some more in here. There's one down here I think. And if I pop these controls off, this base should lift out. Aha, there it is. And we'll just unplug that plug there. And there is the guts to it. Now I don't know what burned up. Oh, I might be in luck to fix this thing. It looks like the power transformer became went supernova, so maybe maybe the high voltage transformer is okay. interesting because it kind of looks just like this transformer failed <sighs> that would be good if that's all that's wrong with it because uh, I'm sure I can find a transformer I don't know what the voltage is but I'm, I'm getting I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably a 12 volt center tap or something this capacitor here is rated at 50 volts so it's it's, it's not going to be that high right it just uses a, a 555 timer but I bet you the flyback is okay. And uh, whatever this block is over here. That's maybe the fusing. Hmm, looks like the power goes into that. Looks like the mains goes into this. This is the low voltage power transformer. Well that's burnt up so we can just take that out. As you can see it went nice and toasty. So we can just, we'll just clip that out and remove that right away. I'm just going to put this aside so it doesn't get damaged. This transformer still stinks. It was like months ago that this thing burnt up. I wonder, if we, I wonder if we had a power surge. I wonder if that's what burnt it up. Anyway, if I get it working, it's easy to determine if the thing's working because I'll be able to draw an arc off of this without putting the, the ball back on. But as long as the... Uh, the flyback transformer is what caused this to go, because of course the flyback could have it could have failed, right? Shorted, shorted the transistor, overloaded the transformer, and the transformer burned up, or the transformer just could have gone supernova. Let's cut this out of here and see what it is. 
So, let's see what it is. It doesn't say on here what the value is. One thing's for sure, that didn't have thermal runaway protection. No fusing on this transformer, and that's why when it went, it went with a big puff of smoke, stunk up the whole house, and uh, my son thought the place was burning down because the whole house was full of smoke when that thing went up. This bracket. Whoa. I just want to see what's, the, what's in this thing here. It should be just fusing, I think. It should be a fuse in there. I'm just trying to figure out how to get it out of here. Uh, maybe if I take out this screw. See, I have a feeling this is just, this is fusing. Don't know, never had it open. But you would think that the, the mains should be fused. The mains are grounded to here. This is what this ground lug is for. This is what grounds the unit itself. What is inside here? Oh, there's no fuse. This is, this is just a choke and a couple capacitors. Now what that would be for is this is going to be to uh, prevent the this is going to generate a lot of radio frequency interference just by the way that these things operate and that's to prevent it from getting back onto the power line and causing interference to radios. I mean it causes interference to radios anyway. You know you don't want to be if this thing's turned on you're not turning on your AM radio. Okay simple as that. Your AM radio it's off when this thing's on because it's on you're not hearing anything it's it it throws out so much noise on the am band it's about as bad as a plasma tv so what i'm curious is uh what the, uh, whether this thing's popped a transistor down here or not, I'm just going to lift the board out and uh, we'll we'll take a look and see whether the see whether the the uh, output transistor here is gone or not. It may have that may have popped first, and that may have been what what blew the uh, the power transformer as if this thing shorted. I don't think it's anything special. It's probably just an NPN of some type. It's not shorted. I'm guessing it's probably a 12 volt center tap. That's a guess. But we'll try it with a 12 volt center tap and just see whether this thing uh, produces any high voltage. I'm going to hook this up to an AC transformer because it may need AC and not work off DC very well. But we'll, we'll put some power to this thing and see if I can draw an arc. Doesn't appear to be doing anything. Make some voltage measurements here.
Okay, what do we got here for volts? 27 volts. Just check the pin number 8 of the... And there's still nothing on the 555. I would expect to see voltage there. Because it's not going to work without power. And they go up through this control panel here. As you can see, the controls are connected to yet another circuit board, which has got an LM324. It should just be an op amp, I believe. Yeah, an LM324. That's just a quad op amp. Is all that is. That's just going to be for processing the sound from the microphone here. There's a microphone on the bottom here. That's just going to be for amplifying the sound from the microphone to control the actual unit itself. The 555 generates the uh, generates the, the trigger voltage that drives the output IC, our output transistor, which drives the transformer. Okay, I'm just going to check the voltages that are going up to this board that's got the op amps on it, because of course op amps require a positive and a negative supply. So if one of our supply voltages is missing, that might be why I'm not getting the proper B plus to the actual uh, 555 timer. So I've got negative 23, negative 23, negative 23, negative 21, negative 1.2, negative 18, negative 23. I have a feeling that there should be, and I've been scoping the output, and I, I do see a waveform, but not the right frequency. Uh, I should see, I think, a positive voltage should go, needs to go to this control board. Our positive voltage comes off of the diode block, goes around here into the transformer, and then from there comes back. Now it might it might take it off of a secondary winding here. Just looking to see what's in this circuitry. Oh, that's come off now. So there's a couple more diodes down here as well, and a couple capacitors. Listen. Not measuring to the right reference point. I'm measuring to the. I'm measuring to the uh, common terminal on the transformer. I may need to measure to that, which is the ground wire. Might help if I don't short my transformer wires together. That one got kind of toasty warm. Ooh, do you hear what I hear? I hear high voltage. Nine volts, one volt. Yeah, it's like working better. right now. Nine. Nine. And my 555 timer has 10 volts going in. Okay, that explains why I was getting the wrong measurements. Watch this. I got power on this thing now. Look. It was working. Interesting. Now my high voltage is low because one of my jumpers uh, got damaged when I shorted it out. So I'm only getting half the voltage. I'm gonna change that jumper out and that'll fix that. It was working there for a minute. Hmm. Okay, my jumper wire that I kind of smoked, it kind of uh, 
and open. I got a new jumper wire in for my center tap. Okay, let's let's uh, let's see what happens now. Let's get this thing in frame here, so we can draw a nice big blue arc. Okay, I think we got some power on this thing happening. My B plus is too high, so it's going into shutdown. I got to turn the variac down a bit so that this thing doesn't shut off. So I'm going to run this at a little lower voltage. I think it needs about 12 volts AC, so I've turned my Variac down because this is an 18 volt transformer. The unit has a shutdown circuit, so if the voltage goes too high, so I've set it for uh, 24 volts between the two, it's 12 volt center tap. And, uh, not shutting down. So what I'll do is I'm going to place I'm going to place the plasma ball back on here and just power it with this transformer temporarily just to make sure everything's working and then I'll, I'll get a, a 12 volt center tap transformer and then I'll replace this and I'll replace this transformer. I'll have to find one that will fit in here. But for the, for the video I'm going to prove operation by putting the plasma block ball back together and I'll just bring the wires out of the base here so I can connect it to my temporary transformer running through the Variac. We can prove that it's working and uh, then I can just get a transformer for it and I don't have to fix that part on camera. You guys will see what it's working. Okay, I've got the plasma ball ready to test now. Got the lights out so you can see it better. I don't have the high voltage lead threaded all the way up to the top of the ball here because it's really tough to thread in there and it's only going to have to come apart again when I get a proper transformer for it. But uh, let's see if it works. Aha! It works. And I can adjust the focus and the power level of it. Now again, when I get the correct voltage, it'll probably appear... Oh, it's doing weird things. It's doing weird things to things on my bench here. Like I noticed that my scrolling sign has gone out. Hmm, strange. But anyway, see, as you can see, it's not... It's not all the way to the top. The wire is probably about halfway up here. And I got to fish it all the way up. But the, the base is not totally either. Um, don't know what the exact voltage of this thing was, but I, I'm thinking it's probably a 12 volt, to, uh, you know, 24 volt with a 12 volt center tap. That's what I'm running it at now is 24 volts. If I increase the voltage too much on the Variac, you'll see what will happen is it'll, it'll go out. So there is an over voltage protection. That's getting better. But these things are kind of cool. First time I saw one of these things was, I think the first time I saw one was at Expo 86 at Vancouver, at the Expo site. I saw one. And then I saw one when I was down in Disneyland and they were ridiculously expensive. They were, you know, selling them for five or $600 for them. And then I found this one and I don't even remember, <coughs> I don't even remember where I found this thing, but I found it years and years and years ago. And I picked it up. I did get to the root cause that caused the transformer to burn out. The insulation material here on the uh, transistor that drives the, the uh, output transformer, the flyback, the insulation material that goes around the metal screw here, see there's an insulator on the back of this transistor, the insulation material um, cracked and over time with the transistor heating and cooling it allowed the screw here to short shorting it to the heat sink which is grounded which is what burned out the transformer so before I put a new transformer in this I'm going to have to get some new hardware and remount the transistor without this brittle look at this it's just crumbly brittle plastic that's what caused this one to fail just plastic fatigue over time heating and cooling caused the transistor to short out so now we know why this thing failed and how I'm going to go about fixing it. I have to get a new insulator and remount the transistor and a new transformer, 24 volt center tap. I think it's probably about a one amp one, but that's for a future project. Thanks for watching. I'm going to put this thing back together and put it into storage until I get around to fixing it. Thanks for watching.